a Buffalo Fanatics Draft Prospect Exclusive. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into a Buffalo Fanatics exclusive. We are here with Diamador Lenoir of the University of Oregon. He's a cornerback. How are you doing today? Yes, sir. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. Feel good. <laughs> Just grinding. <laughs> oh, I feel you. My, my first question for, for you here today is, how jealous are your teammates uh, about how awesome your name is? Oh, very jealous. <laughs> they tell me every day. You know, what, what, what are the origins unique. behind that name? Uh, well, in Spanish, it means the lover, but I'm French, so it's, you know, it's kind of like a French name. Oh, nice. I, I, like, I, I always tell people, you can tell by someone's name how good they're going to be in the NFL. And I think just based on your name, you are going to be a very successful player in the National Football League. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so obviously this is a Buffalo Bills focused podcast. So my first uh, you know, question to you is explain to Bills Mafia what kind of player they're getting if the Buffalo Bills wind up selecting you in the draft. Well, if the Buffalo Bills get me in the draft, you know, they're getting possibly one of the best one of the best cover corners in the draft, I believe. I believe if not the best. Um, a hard worker going to give 110% every play in just a downright dog. Yeah, we got we got a, we got a lot of those 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 guys who like to call themselves dogs here in Buffalo, Stefan Diggs being one of them. Would you be looking forward to going up against Stefan Diggs, Emmanuel DeSanders, Cole Beasley every day in practice? Yes, sir. You know, iron sharpens iron. Yeah, I'd love to get after it with them boys. But, um, yeah, I look at Stephon Diggs, one of the better receivers in the league, especially past this this past year he just had. You know, um, it would be, be cool to just go against him every day and just compete. Mm-hmm. You know, you were a big deal recruit coming out of high school. I believe you were Rivals' number 54-ranked pro- prospect. Do you remember the first instance in college at the University of Oregon when you were sort of humbled on the football field? Uh, a little bit, and how did you overcome uh, being humble a little bit uh, with that step up in uh, in in uh, uh, competition? Yeah, actually, I do remember it. It was against. Uh, it was like my first spring. It was my first spring practice. It was against Dylan Mitchell. He had ran a, like a deep post on me, and I tried to undercut it and try to make a play on the ball. And then, like the way Justin Herbert threw it, it was it was a beautiful ball. I ain't gonna lie, it was a beautiful ball. He let it. He put it right on the money, and I was I was hurt, you know. And then, you know, I kept I kept competing. I competed the whole day, and then like later on, I want to say like after after that, he was just telling me like, you know, just trust just trust your ability. Like you 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 pretty good as a freshman, but I know you're gonna be great later on. Just trust your ability and just keep uh just keep getting better. Just keep coming to practice. Yeah, I was speaking of your freshman year. I was reading through your bio uh, on the University of Oregon page, and I don't know if this is a typo or not, or what exactly statistics this, this is. But it said your freshman year against Arizona State, which is uh, actually the university I'm attending right now for my master's program. So a little Pac-12 love. We're, we're sort of yeah. rivals with you, but it said you had 17 stops in that game. What is the Oregon's definition of a stop? Uh, is that that's not a tackle, is it? Uh, it could possibly it could be a tackle. It could be uh, PBUs on third down. I want to say, like that could be a definition of a stop. Also, okay. So you just had you you just have yourself one hack of a game against Arizona State, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a fun game. <laughs> uh, the reason why I'm asking you about like being humbled in your first, you know, you know, couple of practices at Oregon or your first instance of being humbled is we have a coach here in Buffalo, in Sean McDermott who's all about two things. Number one is it's called the process. He always tells the players to, you know, respect the process and trust the process. And he's a big into the the growth mindset. Have you ever heard of those two terms used by Mario Cristobal at all at Oregon? Or what are some of the mantras that he uses uh, with you guys? It's it's the same thing. He tells us all the time, trust the process. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not going to always start off green for you. So just keep working and eventually you'll get there. That's what I believe. So speaking of the process and habits and all that stuff, 
What is some current training uh, that you're doing right now in preparation for this draft? Well, I'm really just working on my sporty, I would say, you know, because I'm all, I'm all, I'm already like flu, a fluent athlete. And I believe that I'm one of the most fluent athletes in this draft with hips, feet, you know, so I'm just, just getting faster. You know, I just want to show everybody that I can really run mm -hmm. and I'm not just a big body corner. You know, at uh, speaking of being a big body corner, people in in Buffalo, they want a, a CB2 next to Trey White, who's not afraid to get up and lay the lumber on some people. Would you consider yourself like a, a heavy hitter? Are you not afraid uh, to lay the smack down at the line of scrimmage on some receivers or running backs that cross your path? Yes, sir. I'm all I'm all about the run game. I love the run game. I'm <laughs> actually, you know, I'm I actually got a lot of dogs in me. That's why I say I'm a, just a downright dog. You know, because I'll I'll take on 230 running backs. You know, I've done it before with the dude from Iowa State, um, the dude from Cal. I want to say uh, Zach Moss. Like I played against those those type of guys. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they're about like 220, 225. Yeah. I would say, and I'm just not afraid. Not afraid to make a tackle. I'm not afraid to get my nose dirty. Zach, Zach Moss. He is actually a Buffalo Bill right now, and. Yeah. Everyone in Buffalo loved this dude because one of his comments in the pre-draft process was, I love to make defenders make business decisions. When they come across me, they got to make a business decision if they're going to lay the lumber on me. So my question to you, going one-on-one -on -one with Zach Moss, was that a smart business decision for him to, to test you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all I can say is I, I wasn't afraid. Yeah. That's all, right. all I, I wasn't afraid. <laughs> You know, I respect uh, this game, though. I respect this game. So this is obviously, again, a, a Buffalo Bills-related uh, interview and, and video cast. So my question to you, my next question to you is, what teams have you been in contact with in this pre-draft process, and what is the, what are those conversations like? Um, I've, I've been in contact with uh, pretty much this. This is actually the first week where it's been, like, really hectic for me because I've been mm -hmm. talking to a lot of different teams and – um, I talked to the bu the Buffalo Bills early on, like when the, the process first started, you know, and they, they really like me, I believe. And uh, I like B Buffalo a lot, too. Oh, wow. So hopefully we can get <laughs> something going. <laughs> I, I, I love that I'm breaking. I love that I'm breaking news here. This is this is like the inside. I'm, I'm getting giddy right now. So I can't I can't wait to to show this to the people to let the Buffalo Bills know that you're interested. I remember I was I was interviewing a prospect. Uh, last week uh, or a couple weeks ago, Coyote Osika from the University of Buffalo. And I'm like, hey, yeah, the Buffalo Bills been in contact with you. And he's like, nah. And I'm like, oh, darn. <laughs> like, I felt so bad. It was so awkward. So this is awesome that you've actually been in contact with the Buffalo Bills and uh, and that you are mutually interested in the Buffalo Bills. So, uh, you know, speaking about that, uh, what what system do you guys run at Oregon? Like what scheme do you fit in as you transition to the next level? Uh, and do you think you're a good fit here in Buffalo with the with the scheme that they run? Yeah, I believe I believe so. You know, uh, just my 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 body size, mm -hmm. I, I would say, like just me being the person that I am, a physical corner. I believe they love physical corners and they play a lot of man coverage, cover two, and I believe that fits in my 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 play style. So I, hopefully they see me as one of the players that they're got a tar that they have a target on mm -hmm. because I would fit in their scheme. You know, I, I would love to be in Buffalo. Mm. Well, I'm really, I would love to be anywhere. You know, I'm just, <laughs> just ready to get started. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, you know, you mentioned that you have fluid, you, you're a very fluid athlete, you have fluid hips, and you mentioned that you're a very aggressive tackler. Do you believe that you're a boundary-only corner or Buffalo ran the most nickel in, in the NFL last year? Do you believe you have the position versatility to play inside as well? Yeah, I believe. Actually, I believe I'm the. I'm also one of the most versatile players in the draft. I can play safety, nickel, and corner, and I was even in the box sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I I believe I'm one of the most versatile players in the draft. Also, All right. I got a couple more questions for you here. You got a couple of teammates there that are also pretty highly regarded draft prospects in in Thomas Graham and Javon Holland. What was it? What's it been like playing with those guys the last couple of years? And how do you guys push each other in practice? 
Oh, well, we all we was always we always so competitive. So we always pushed each other when everyone makes a play. We always try to outdo each other. So mm -hmm. that was just like our competitive nature. But it was always all love and encouraging words when whenever we cross paths and, you know, just playing with them just made my job a lot easier because I knew one side of the field was getting locked down also. Hmm. But, hey, you're not going to have any problems with that in Buffalo because you're going to have Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer back there at safety, and you're going to have Trey White across from you and possibly Teron Johnson in the slot if you're playing on the boundary. So are you ready for quarterbacks to be throwing at you a ton? Uh, yeah, I, I love it. I, that's what I want. I love it. <laughs> I need to make my name early. I love to learn from Trey White. You know, I, I was just watching his uh, NFL film, you know, the other day and just how he break down receivers. You know, I, I, I believe he's a smart guy. He wanted to – he was the corner with the best feet that I've ever seen. Oh, wow. That's a, quite some praise there. You know, I'm yeah. sure Bill's Mafia is going to love to hear that. So um, you were second team all Pac-12 two straight years. You are were a three-year starter at Oregon, yet you didn't get a single – you didn't get a senior in senior bowl invite, excuse me. Uh, and you know, you're a, a middle round projection. Uh, what kind of chip does that put on your shoulder as a draft prospect? You know, uh, it just, it just gave me more motivation to just want to go kill pro day. Mm -hmm. you no, know, that's just, that's just all like just turn everything. And I think that I deserve just turn it in to motivation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, you mentioned the 40 earlier, like, you're trying to pick up your speed. You're trying to improve your 40. There's a, a local prospect in Buffalo. Uh, went to my uh, you know, undergraduate alumni, Jared Patterson. He's a running back. And he, yeah. been, he, was, he was down in Florida working on his 40, working on his 40, working on his 40. Because he knew as a running back, he had all the – everything going for him. Contact balance, vision, everything, college production. Yet everyone was going to make such a big deal about that 40 time. Do you think the 40 time is overrated? Um, uh, in some cases, uh, some people actually play faster than their 40 time sometimes, but then again, it shows like it, it's like, it, it could be, it could go either way. Sometimes it's tricky, mm -hmm. but I believe that I, that I'm going to do something special on pro day. So <laughs> when is the, when is the Oregon pro day? April 2nd. All right. You willing to make a prediction for your 40 time right now, or are we gonna we're just gonna let you show it on the field? Uh four three. I, I'm saying four three five or lower. Ooh, all right, four three five. That's gonna that's gonna raise that's gonna that's gonna turn some heads. And I think that uh we might be moving you up a round or two if you can if you can run that. So I, I really do hope the best for you there. Um all right, I'm I'm gonna close it out with this. I want to throw a little bit of Buffalo trivia at you. What do you know right now currently about the city of Buffalo? Was well, sad to say I don't know anything about <laughs> Buffalo, but I can learn. I can. All learn. right, I I'm gonna learn. throw. Do you have you at your time at the University of Oregon ever taken a geography class? No. All right. No. Well, I'm I'm gonna throw a little geography trivia at you here, and we're gonna see how you can do. How many hours do you think it is from Buffalo to New York City? Two. Two hours. Ooh, six hours. It is six really? hours. Yeah, six hours all across the state of New York. So I got a couple of questions for you now. Now that you know Buffalo and New York City are six hours apart, wow. what do you think is closer, Toronto or uh, or New York City? To Buffalo? Yeah. Toronto. All right, you are correct. Toronto is one hour away. How about this one? Pittsburgh or New York City? I would say Pittsburgh. You are correct. It's four hours to Pittsburgh. How about yes, Cleveland? Sir. Cleveland. New York City. Ooh, Cleveland is actually half the amount of time than New really? York City. It is three hours away. Yeah. I, I wow. actually, back when I lived in Buffalo, I would go to Cleveland all the time for the, the, the MAC championship game. I just can't believe it's six hours away. <laughs> yeah. That's it's a, uh, hey, time, time flies. You, you put a couple good podcasts on, uh, you can get, you can get there pretty quick. Uh, Detroit or New York City? Detroit. I'm going to give it to you because technically it depends. It's four yeah. hours if you go through Canada. But right now, Canada is currently shut off. You can't go through Canada. 
So if you actually go through uh, the continental United States, it's a six hour drive. So it's a tie. Um, uh, Philly or New York City? So New York City. It's actually a tie. They're both six hours away uh, from Buffalo. All right. We're last good. one for you. Last one for you. Washington, D.C. or New York City. Oh, Washington, D.C. Ooh, it's actually uh, seven hours to D.C., six hours to New York. So, Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, that's <laughs> all right. You, If you are drafted by the Buffalo Bills, how about this? Uh, do I have permission to hit you up if you're drafted by the Bills so you can come back on and we can talk about Everything you want to, we can do in, in Buffalo and all the different places you can go get some chicken wings. Because trust me, you're going to want to know where you can go get chicken wings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, well, I really appreciate uh, the time that you've spent here with us. Um, and again, thank you so much. Tell the people where they can find you on social media, whether it be Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, Instagram. Well, actually, my Instagram and Twitter is basically the same, but my Instagram is Diamo dot lenore uh and my twitter is diamo dot no my my twitter is diamo underscore lenore all right <laughs> all right man thank you so th yeah thank you so much i really appreciate your time and honestly i'm hoping that you are a buffalo bill because i, I we do these shows all the time we talk about draft prospects and i tell the people they're sleeping on those oregon dvs out there the, yeah the, the, the pac-12 gets no respect yeah big time <laughs> big time yeah. but we're gonna show april 2nd oh yeah all right man thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it. you have a good one all right bills mafia